those of you who have just arrived, we, uh, well, okay, two things. The reason I'm using this microphone is because we hope at some point in the middle of my speaking or some other thing happening that we will actually be uh, streaming this event live. And there are people watching, uh, waiting for this feed to come up in uh, Australia, New Zealand, Vancouver, uh, house parties in, in uh, LA and in Chicago, <laughs> uh, Singapore, did I say Singapore? Uh, so uh, we have to speak into these mics so that they can hear us. So uh, shout out to all of you watching in the internet world, wherever, wherever you are. They University. Fresh and this is a program of the American Voices Institute. Play Institute. Institute. And uh, I, as much as I appreciate the round of applause, we really need to give a huge round of applause to the Andrew Mellon Foundation that is in the house. <laughs> is uh, dedicated to advancing the infrastructure for new play development nationwide. So, uh, and that is uh, at the good graces and the great wisdom of the Mellon Foundation that we are at, doing that work here. And this uh, convening is part of uh, the Institute. I, the house lights are out. We have an extraordinary group of participants who have been here all weekend. And I just, uh, again, one more round of applause if we hold it for one second. But these guys started talking yesterday afternoon uh, around 2 o'clock. And I didn't let them stop until about 6 o'clock when we broke for dinner tonight. And they've been talking about the state of devised work in the American theater today, even trying to decide what devised work means, and actually even more than that, trying to decide if we care what it means. Because if, if we know what it means, it's perhaps put a box around something that we'd rather not put a box around. Here, here. So here we are talking about devised work all weekend, and we haven't actually seen or talked much about the work itself. And you're here tonight to uh, participate in that. So thank you guys for all your energy all weekend uh, to get this uh, convening going. So a round of applause for our participants. And now I'm not spelling, all these thank yous are important. Um, how's the internet doing? Oh, no, I can't spell. And so then, lastly, uh, the front row here, these guys are great souls. This is the group of people, and I'm going to ask you all to stand up and turn around. This is the group of people who have volunteered to be the guinea pigs tonight for our Master Teachers Lecture Demos, which will be uh, four uh, samples of the kinds of work and the way work is made from four of the ensembles that were participating at this weekend. But here are our guinea pigs. Please uh, stand up, turn around, take a bow. They have no idea what they've signed up for. They just happen to do it. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start the program, and we're going to start it with the fabulous Kirkland Yay. of the Ruby Campbell, Woo! Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I've been trying to uh, find a way that I can pray, and that's a really difficult proposition for and agnostic, lapsed, southern Adventist. Who's calling? <laughs> Take the call. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, it's, uh, that's not stopped me, so uh, I want to try it with you guys. And, uh, um, so I wonder if you'll all bow your heads uh, and close your eyes, and if you're on the internet. Uh, um, now, keeping your head bowed and your eyes closed, I want you to raise your hand when any of the following phrases apply to you. And there's no limit to the number of times you can raise your hand, all right? Okay. Uh, raise your hand if you feel like, I want to have fun. I want to live with abandon. I don't want to worry too much about what other people think of me. And if that means sometimes I'm going to risk feeling a little bit embarrassed, so be it. I want to be a little bit embarrassed a little bit more often. Raise your hand if you feel like that. Right. Now raise your hand if you feel like, I want to be more serious. I read the works of Chekhov and Tolstoy. I read Emily Dickinson and Sylvia Plath. Hell, I think we've been known to read a little Wittgenstein. When I read stuff like that, I feel like I want to train myself to express the weight and depth of my emotions and thoughts. I want to be more serious sometimes. Now, raise your hands if you feel like, I want a day off. 
I want to step out of my life and go to some shitty beach town like Corpus Christi, Texas. Not some fancy European beach, but a place where I can wear a skimpy bathing suit and drink wine coolers and listen to John Cougar Mellencamp and really understand what he's singing about. Who here wants that kind of day off? Alright, great. That's nice. Alright, now who here needs to work harder? Not the frustrating kind of hard work, banging your head against the wall, doing the same thing over and over, but the kind of hard work that's a pleasure to do. I want to get in one really hard day's work, and I want my friends to be there with me, and I want to laugh through it all, and I want there to be plenty of food and good, strong coffee to carry us into the night. Now raise your hand if you feel like there are people in this room that I want to steal into my life. There are people in this room that I want to take away and have with me the next time I devise theater or write a grant or go see a show. Raise your hand if there are people in this room you want to steal into your life and make a part of your art and your work. Now raise your hand if there are people in this room you want to steal into your life and do a little more than devise theater. Raise your hand if there's someone in this room that you want to kiss, or cuddle, or give a hickey to, or get a hickey from. Raise your hand if there are people in this room that you want to get irresponsible with. <laughs> Finally, maybe there are some of you out there who feel like, I want God to turn out to be real. And I want to feel God's presence in my life, and in the lives of my friends and family. When I open my eyes, I want to feel renewed and filled with the spirit of God, which may be very much like the spirit of fun, or the spirit of good hard work, or the spirit of vacation, or the spirit of the people in this room. All right, thanks. You can open your eyes. Uh, will my new friends come up? Do you wish you had a microphone, friends? Oh, you're my friends too? <laughs> we have more friends. That's awesome. No, this will work perfect. Are, are any of you... Are you also my friend? Maybe uh, Now I feel like, why just five friends? <laughs> yeah, I need a chair. I want a chair. Um, this is going to be so good. Um, so I'm with the Root Mix. I was just talking to Jeff and I was saying how weird it is. We're talking about device theater, but you, you sort of don't know anything about the Root Mix if you just know Kirk, because there's six Root Mechanicals. Um, it's sort of like just sending your arm to a conference. It's like, I don't know what it's like. But um, uh, there's six Root Mechanicals, and uh, we've been making theater together for like 15 or 16 years. I think we're a collective. There's six artistic directors. We do everything by consensus for the most part. There's a, a working company of about 30 designers and actors and directors and writers and all sorts of people. Um, and we sort of uh, uh, don't have a process. We actually sort of avoid process as much as we can and make a new process every time. So uh, so what to do with you? What to do with you, friends? Um, so the, the, something that's become a part of our work recently is that we've had a more sort of curatorial approach, that we just ask everybody in the company and in fact everybody in the community, our neighbors, our friends, to make something in the sort of theme of what we're doing, and then we slowly sort of cobble it all together. So I thought, I'll just do, like if the Root Mechanicals were here today, and they said, let's make something, this is the sort of thing I'm into right now that I'm, I'm doing, so this is what I would make. Yes. Um, and actually some of this, so this is some of the question work that I do, and Melanie Joseph and I are doing some of this work too. So that should confuse you, and later it's like, that boundary shows what purpose is like that, I don't know. Um, so, First, we're all going to play in a second, but first I'm just going to play with one person. <laughs> all right, good. Um, hi, what's your name? My name is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, what's your earliest memory? In preschool, having having snacks and uh, singing my favorite. That's great. Um, would you be surprised if I told you that never happened? Yes. <laughs> uh, how old were you when that happened? Year four. 
What kind of documentation exists for this <laughs> Are there any videotapes or photos? No. <laughs> How many people would agree to your version of this event? Uh, at least my mother would agree. And, and how old did you say you were? Three or four. And how old are you now? Twenty-one. Twenty-two? <laughs> um, do you mind if we do some math? That's okay. Alright, so if you were three, how many years have passed since you had this memory? Eighteen. Or nineteen. <laughs> so this is an eighteen or nineteen year old memory. What else do you have in your life that's that old? My parents. Would, would you drive a car that was 18 years old? <laughs> mm, maybe not. You know what sort of upkeep an 18 year old car would take? <laughs> <laughs> probably have to be checked pretty often. Uh, what sort of upkeep do you think memories take? Um, when you're not thinking of a memory, what do you think is happening with it? Is it fair to say that memories are the oldest things that you have in your life, older than most of your appliances in your car? Yes. Right. Uh, how old do you expect to become? possible that you could really enjoy dying? If I were really, really old. <laughs> um, so, under what circumstances do you think dying would be the most fantastic? I, I guess the cliche of lying in bed with your loved ones around you and knowing that it's your time to go. Would you allow everyone in this room to wish that for you? All right. 